Everyone is. Uh, I'm a traveler. In the past 11 years, is uh, I published a various uh, books and then using my text, using my blog, is uh, to come uh, to discuss architecture with everyone in the world. Uh, although it's mainly in Chinese, but it's now is uh, I we try is uh, to using a new way is uh, uh, to start this my YouTube channel. Uh, today we are very lucky. We have uh, my good friend is uh, Tony. Um, when I review the starting point of. Um, um, my concern on environmental or sustainable design, uh, it would be back to my uh, first bachelor degree. Um, actually, when I was young, I really loved architecture and design, but um, I couldn't get enrolled in the School of Architecture. My first bachelor degree uh, was in uh, civil engineering. Mm -hmm. At that time, my major uh, was the environmental engineering. Back to 1995 to 1998, almost over 30 years ago. At that time, uh, in the society, I think um, um, no one can associate what, what is the environmental design and what is the sustainable design. But go back to my uh, study in civil and environmental engineering, I, I learned a lot about the environment and the society. If we couldn't deal with the environmental issue properly, the society couldn't be sustainable, such as the municipal waste. Uh, we can't get any 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 uh, strategies to deal with um, without the incinerators. Just the landfill cannot deal with the whole issue. But back to the our environment, our society. When we carry out what the uh, the built environment, we should take in food into account of our waste or the our environmental damage. So at that time, just the start of my vision. I really, as a, no matter as an engineer or an architect, we should be responsible for our environment. Mm -hmm. And after graduation, I, um, I was as a graduate engineer for three years. Uh, after three years, I really want to go back to School of Architecture and realize my dream. So I start to study my uh, architectural degree and and another milestone for me was back to 2004 and 2005 at the summer. Um, um, I, I was studying in Master of Architecture year one. Uh, at that time, I was so fortunate. I got the traveling scholarship by the Hong Kong Institute of Architects. And that was part of the green tour. And I went to uh, Brazil and Peru with a group of the um, um, fellow architects. I learned a lot in that trip. And one of the key uh, destination was to visit uh, one of the most sustainable city uh, in the world, uh, Curitiba, which is located at the southern part of Brazil. And we visit there and, and learn a lot about the sustainable uh, cityscape, um, such as uh, the whole city, like the, um, the finger growth, so it's not just concentrate all the activities in the mm -hmm. core, but in the spine. So it can continuously growth in different direction for the sustainable um, development. And also um, like the municipal waste, almost 90% um, can be reused. And also the, uh, almost 70% of the people use the public transport to reduce the carbon emission uh, while transportation. Uh, it, it is so inspiring in that small city in the um, Brazil can be so sustainable. One of the key uh, successful factor was the mayor. Um, he was the architect and planner and back to 1970s. And he took uh, that position of the mayor for almost 12 years. And he did a lot of the strategies on policy to incentivize the whole city to be sustainable. And, and that experience go back to Hong Kong just to rethink in our city so well developed, why we can't do or put more, uh, advocating more on a sustainable design. So at that time already uh, give me the impression or the decision of my career development that it should have some vision to drive our career life. 
I got a chance to design the, uh, the first zero carbon building in Hong Kong, the SASEB zero carbon building. And at that time, I learned a lot how to uh, realize the environmental driven project in our high density, high rise city. And I learned a lot the interdisciplinary design and the collaboration through different stakeholders to work out the environmental driven project really can be um, realized in Hong Kong. So I work in my previous company, the Ronald and Partners, uh, in the sustainable team. And four years ago, uh, 2017, at that time, I really want to put more forward, uh, more driven uh, design. So I established my own firm, uh, 20 Year Green Architects. So right now, for years, um, I'm, I, I still feel very grateful that I got uh, several chances to exemplify the project with strong vision of environmental and social sustainability. When I was working in Bonnelli Partners back to 2011, 2012, I was the, uh, the architect for that building. So after eight years, um, because of the popularity of that building and more people go there, so uh, the construction industry council uh, um, need the upgrading works uh, to make the whole building. Uh, there are two purposes. One is to, uh, because of the more popularity, so make the capacity of the building larger, like the more uh, air conditioning or more uh, facilities to be provided. The second thing is to uh, install more advanced or pioneered um, uh, installation related to environmental design in that zero common building as the platform to exemplify the advanced technology. So um, in 2018, um, our firm uh, was appointed as the architect for the renovation work. So um, basically, we, we, we did two things. One was the revitalizing work. Uh, we make use of the recycled material, the, uh, the, the existing material to reshape it in a new form for the um, better performance. The second thing we was uh, thinking of the new installation. I can share two examples. One is the, um, the AIPV canopy. AIPV stands for Air Improvement Photovoltaic. So that kind of the photovoltaic uh, is transparent. So the daylight can penetrate in through. At the same time, it can receive the solar energy to generate electricity. And, and it has the property of the air improvement because of the nano coating. So it can decompose the air pollutants, such as the uh, PM 2.5, and also have the self cleansing uh, property. So it can increase the efficiency of the uh, solar energy generation. So it becomes a canopy, be part of the eco cafe to uh, advocate more outdoor seating. So uh, that was the first adopted in Hong Kong. Actually, that was the second application in Asia. The first one was in Beijing International Airport. Uh, you may know that in Beijing, the air pollution uh, is the great big issue. So that's why um, the advancement of the renewable technology at the same time also improved the air quality. Mm -hmm. So we adopt that technology in Hong Kong as the first adoption. So hope that it can be more uh, popular and why used in the construction industry in our high density city. And the second um, example installation um, is the what we call EMMIC, stormwater for air conditioning. This was also the first pioneer project in Hong Kong. We made use of the underground stormwater. Um, you guys may not know uh, in our uh, SESCB zero carbon building site, we are, you have the, quite a big site, but we have a uh, quite complicated underground situation. We have a very big um, uh, boss culvert underground um, that was uh, 30 meter wide. Uh, so as they diagonally passing through the whole site, um, it, it, it seems to be very challenging when we design the building because we cannot uh, put any building on that box cover. And, and, but it, it is a good opportunity because we have the stormwater passing through and the stormwater has a good property of the temperature because under, under 
underground in the soil condition. So the temperature is quite stable, like in summertime, the temperature can achieve up around 20 degrees Celsius. So we can just to uh, extract some of the stormwater and use the heat exchange um, equipment and then to convert it into the uh, chilled water for the air conditioning. As I mentioned before, because of the popularity of the seal garden building, the population increase, so it has a quite a big demand to enhance the air conditioning. Although we have a good passive design of the whole building, but in our hot summer and the high humidity still have a certain air conditioning inside. So we make use of the underground storm water for the heat exchange for the air conditioning. In the winter time, also because of the stable of the temperature, so we also can extract it and then we can provide somehow the warm uh, uh, water for the uh, air heating inside. So uh, this is really good to make use of the underground resources. And, and the other thing for that insulation, as I mentioned, EMMIC. MIC stands for Modular Integration Construction Method, and the EM means for the electrical and mechanical. So it's somehow like the modular installation for the building services system. So the whole, whole thing uh, was well installed, well equipped in the factory and transport uh, overnight to the site, installation overnight and then to carry out the test and testing and commissioning for the subsequent 10 days and it works, it commissioned. Uh, it's really good uh, showcase for the existing site without any disturbance to the operation and then enhance the capacity of the, um, the, the building services provision. So in zero common building site, in the, right now we call the CIC zero carbon park, it really a good platform for us to carry out some pioneer project as the pilot scheme there and, and showcase that it can happen to anywhere in our city. So 2017, 2018, at that time, uh, I was the, uh, the co-curator for the Biennale um, uh, exhibitions in Hong Kong. I worked for a project under the uh, flyover that was a undesignated space, no one go there and we uh, revitalize the space, make use of the urban farming. We make use of some um, used wood pallet to build up the whole farm with a small container as the education center. We engage the urban farmers and organic farmers and carry out over uh, 20 different workshops to uh, exchange the knowledge about the urban farming, community gardening, and engage over 200 locals, especially for those workers in the government building adjacent to the site. Uh, that was really an um, interesting project and very uh, inspirational to me because for that undesignated space, we get involved the community to build up the uh, community garden or community farm. And within that four months, we got um, uh, three harvest, three ha batches of harvest. Uh, through the process, the locals visit the site day by day because they plant their own plants there, they take care of the vegetation. And because of that, they get more chance for social, social interaction. They exchange the knowledge uh, in the workshop with the farmers and also they exchange their vegetables when they harvest and share the experience and meet the vegetables each other. So that was so inspiring to me that uh, we can, it's not a big architecture, just a small um, place making can revitalize the undesignated space. Just back to a year ago, um, we, uh, we are appointed by the Conservancy Association, which was the one of the um, uh, uh, green groups in Hong Kong has a quite long history. So uh, uh, the project was uh, also under the flyover, uh, the undesignated space uh, to build an urban forestry education center. So for that, uh, that flyover was located in a uh, urban district and very close to the MPL stations exit. So the site is very, um, 
um, easily accessed. But that was the undesignated space for many years because of the site condition. Um, there are many site constraints there. Uh, under flyover, the headroom is a quick challenge, challenge, and also it is adjacent to the MTL protection zone. Mm -hmm. And also under the flyover, that was the drainage reserve area, water main reserve area, many underground utilities passing through the site. But the experience I got in the previous the experiential project, we can um, get involved more interdisciplinary collaboration, more activities can be there, and we get the image, uh, get the concept to be the movable architecture, and uh, somehow we can work out that undesignated space becomes a social hub, especially for environmental education. So for that project, we collaborate with another um, architect, uh, Dr. Benjamin Yu. We work together to consider the movable architecture, work closely with the client to think of what the environmental education will be there. Now we need more pilot project um, to find out some innovative idea can be exemplified in our city and then we can work step by step to become the real project to really benefit to our society.